Well, good morning, folks, and welcome from a quite wet Stour Head. Uh, I'm parked up at King Alfred's Tower, which is just there. But as you can see, what the rain has brought is all this atmosphere. Look how beautiful that is. That is absolutely stunning. Um, and I cannot wait to get in that forest and uh, see what I can get. So, what we've got with us today is the 4x5 Intrepid. Uh, I've got some Portra 160 and also some uh, HP 5 Plus. I've also got a roll of Delta 400, um, which I don't think I'm going to use. Sorry if you're, it's a, bit, it's a bit windy and it's a little bit wet. Um, which I don't think I'm going to use today, uh, just simply because I don't think it's a roll back kind of day. I think it's a all its glory 4x5 kind of day today. So that's what we're going to go for. I've um, got a few hours this morning, so just going to sort of crack on and see what I can find in the woodland. Um, it's the first time I've been up here actually in the mist. So I'm very hopeful that I might be able to get something different to last time. I said last time I didn't have all of this mist. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I should be able to get a fairly decent shot here. Um, so the issue I've got at the moment is just sheltering the camera from the rain, um, which I'm hoping is going to sort of die off a little bit. Um, I don't have an umbrella or anything with me, so obviously I need to avoid getting rainwater into the filter, uh, or the, I shouldn't say filter, sorry, into the um, uh, film holder who uh, keep, sort of keep the moisture off the, uh, off the film really. So yeah, it might be a bit of a challenge, but uh, you know, can't argue with this. You know, look at some of this, it's just beautiful. So yeah, let's crack on with it. Right, I'm set up. Um, I have stood here before. In fact, I stood here last time and uh, I really like this arrangement of trees and the path going through the middle. It's really obvious, I know that, um, but I just like it. I like the fact that you've got these sort of four prominent trees. You've got the path that sort of winds its way through the middle of them. And I like that you've got these little sort of fern trees dotted about. And then you've also got some sort of, um, you know, brown leaves and bits and pieces. And, you know, I, I really like that. And of course, with this mist, just adds that sort of depth of, uh, sort of depth to the image really. And uh, yeah, I, I really like this shot. Um, now, I have got my um, Lumix with me today, so I'm gonna take a couple of shots on that. Um, as you can probably hear, I'm battling with the rain a bit at the moment. Um, and I'm just trying to decide how to take this shot without getting water um, all over my four x five camera uh, and more so in the film holders itself. So I think I'm gonna um, put the camera on, put the dark cloth over the top and then try and leave the dark cloth off to put the, um, uh, to put the film in and take, the, take the, uh, the image with the dark cloth over the top of the, uh, um, the camera. So hopefully, fingers crossed that'll work. I'm gonna go with a, um, a portrait image here, I think 160. And uh, yeah, because we have got some different colours and stuff like that, so I'm just going to give that a go and um, see what it comes out like. But I think first of all, I'm going to take a couple of digital images because um, I'm still playing with the uh, the Lumix X5 at the moment. So I'm going to take a couple of digital images and then uh, we'll take one in. Um, we'll take one here and then we'll uh, move on down the trail and see what else we can find. <coughs> okay, so we've just taken a few images of. Uh, of these trees with the digital camera. I've taken them at F8. Um, it's given me about a second of exposure time. Um, and what I've done is I've set this up at, um, uh, I've taken high res mode and just a single shot mode. I've taken a one-to-one 
uh, square crop um, image. I've taken a standard three by two image and uh, <clears throat> Um, both in high res and and normal. So what I think I'm going to do actually, while I'm uh, while I've got this here, is I might just try the uh, expand crop just to see what that looks like as well um, with this. So I'm just going to put this back on here again. I am suffering still because I, I've got this Peak Design clip that, that sort of clips the camera on the bag for easy access, which is great, but it doesn't fit with a Manfrotto tripod. I don't know if there's a plate you can get. Um, that sort of adapts that to so i can fit that on or not i, I don't know but um it is massively frustrating um and i am actually in the market at the moment for a new tripod um one that's lighter weight um because I, I am finding that um, carrying this around is is pretty heavy to be fair so something that's lighter weight and that, that fits with the peak design system um and that sort of thing so i am at the moment looking at three-legged thing tripods um i've been on talking to them about what i shoot and how i shoot and this that and the other and they've been really really good actually about coming back to me and chatting to me about different tripod options and that sort of thing um they're certainly not giving me a free tripod or asking me to say any of this but i could recommend that certainly going off their customer service so far they've been really really good so um i am massively considering uh a tripod from them but uh yeah at the moment still undecided so anyway there we go right so let's get on and um change the aspect ratio of this before i take the uh, belt cap off i absolutely love this expand crop i'm gonna be honest it's just it is utterly amazing i absolutely love it like i said the biggest issue i've got here is that the uh camera doesn't stay on the, the tripod very well like that because it's sort of at the moment the peak design clip is just just underneath this back plate here and it's literally precariously uh, balanced on here so I definitely don't want it to uh, fall off there we go right that's enough with that digital rubbish let's get on and uh get on and take some shots um i'm going to take some b-roll down here i think uh, what i might do is uh, take a video shot of me just walking through them uh, them trees and around the corner um or not me but you know me just walking with with, with the camera like i said i'm still very much testing this so uh but i am enjoying it so far um anyway let's get to the good stuff and get the uh get the four by five on and get a uh, shot of this because this is beautiful um and i'm hoping it's going to be around for another couple of hours at least so Let's get on and get this shot. Or get this set up, I should say. Right, okay. Um, sorry about you looking up at me. Um, hopefully you're not looking up my nose. But um, this tripod's obviously a lot smaller than this one. So, uh, and again, hence the reason why I'm looking to replace both tripods. Because uh, this one that the camera sat on is a little bit flimsy. Uh, especially now I've gone up to my uh, Lumix that's going to be sat on that to film me doing this. Uh, yeah, it, anyway, whatever. Right. Um, I've got a 250 mm lens on. Um, I've just sort of focused into the near tree that's here. Um, and we're going to get some film in it now. Well, I'm going to um, expose the scene or meet the scene, I should say. And then we're going to get on and uh, take a shot. So we're uh, just going to get the spot meter out. <coughs> right, spot meter out. So um, I'm shooting... What am I going to shoot? Um, portrait, I said 160. Let's change that to 160, which is there. Right, let's see what we got. All right, that's a five. Let's, uh, so, not you can see what I'm metering at the moment, but I'm just metering the trees, the sort of path. Um, just to see where it all falls in the scale, the trees at the back. Um, there's not a massive amount of dynamic range here, but in the scene, um, obviously the sky or the mist is at a nine. That's going to be completely blown out. So what I might do is just bring that sky in a little bit um still put it on the sort of higher end of being nearly black um but just trying to make sure that there's some detail and everything we do everything i'm shooting here so 
I don't want to go any lower than a three and any higher than a nine. So I don't think there's anything in this scene that is a three. No, it's all sitting EV sort of five. And then you've just got the sky really that, that comes up to eight and a third. So I could probably just move that around a little bit. Put that about there. There we go. Right. What settings we got? Um, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go F16 and a third, which gives me four seconds of exposure here. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. So F16, let's dial that in now. So F16 and a third takes me to there. I have to put that on bulb, which on these lenses is the same as a digital camera, which is just B. Um, and then what we have to do is I'm gonna to have to check the app on my phone um, for reciprocity failure, because four seconds um, is gonna introduce some reciprocity failure. And what that means basically is that I'm gonna to have to expose the film longer um, to get the right exposure. And there's a very handy app, which is Reciprocity Timer. It's available on the iPhone. I'm not sure on Android, I guess it probably is. Um, that basically will work that time out for you. So you put in your actual exposure time as you've metered. So like I say, in my case is four seconds, um, and that will then spit you out a, a, um, an amount of time. And it's got a little time run as well. So you just press the shutter in, hold the shutter, and press the app at the same time. And, um, uh, obviously once the time is done you just release the shutter and you've, you've got your shot so so I'm just gonna have to check that out now um, that's another reason for wanting to like I say get a uh, dedicated uh, film camera for doing this so that I can actually use my app um, use my phone for other things because like I say <laughs> as I've said a million times before my phone is used for everything <coughs> And I'm sort of just leaving the film at the moment to the very last minute. As you can see here, I've got this over the top. So what I'm going to do is, is put the, put the film um, in, and then I will just cover the uh, cover it to make sure or to try and reduce moisture getting into the film. So uh, yeah, right. I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to uh, see what time we've got, um, and then take a shot, and I'll uh, I'll see you in a second. Okay. So with the um, reciprocity failure I've got six seconds um, so it's supposed to be a four second exposure it's now got up to six seconds uh, to, to account for reciprocity so here we go that's it first shot in the bag managed to keep the film dry I hope Put the sheet in. There we go. All right, I'm going to take another exposure here and then pack up and move on. So let's just lift that up. It's quite handy uh, using that to shield that. Right, let's do that. Okay, six seconds again. Second, second exposure done. Beautiful job. Right, just put that back in the uh, in the film holder. So the uh, rain seems to have sort of died off a little bit, which is kind of nice. Um, but to be honest, actual film holder is damp as well. Um, so I'm not sure this bag's quite as waterproof as what I thought it might be, or that it was. It's not often I actually come out when it's uh, when it's raining. Also, I'm glad I've done today because the uh, obviously woodland photography is beautiful uh, when you get this sort of weather. So just makes it a bit more difficult when you're trying to shoot uh, film. Keep everything dry. Right, I'm gonna get everything packed up here and then we're gonna carry on into the forest. The uh, the mist just seems to be dying back a little bit, but there still is a lot about. So 
yeah, I'm really excited about uh, shooting this morning. It's like loads, of, it's just beautiful in here, it's beautiful. I nearly didn't come out this morning because of the, the rain, but I just had a hunch that uh, it was showing low cloud and sort of, and some rain. And I just had this hunch that because where I am at Stour Head is sort of elevated, um, that the low, we might be sat in the low cloud, which I think we are somewhat, but like I say, it's just uh, the rain. But anyway, never mind. Right, I'll get this tidied up and then we'll get on uh, down the path and see what else we can find. Seems to be the same problem I always have with woodland is just there's so much of it it's just untangling that image from what can seem like quite a chaotic sort of uh, area I suppose um, and it's I've said a million times before it's something I really struggle with and uh, you know woodland photography i absolutely love it i love a woodland i just you know and i think i might be a little bit different to um a lot of photographers out there whereby i like the managed woodland i think right i like a an ancient woodland um with oaks and all that sort of thing but maybe again that's because of my struggles maybe that obviously in a ancient woodland are a bit more um a bit more chaotic than a managed one um and obviously this is you know a plantation um from years and years years ago um it's very uniform and i think it's that uniform nature that i actually quite like um but i still does it I still struggle to um get some images in in uh, areas like this but I mean, I'm happy with that first one I got. Um, I mean, it is a bit different when you can take a dig digital image of it and you get a, a picture of, uh, of what you're gonna get, obviously. Um, whereby obviously with film, I'm gonna wait until I go and develop it to see what I've actually got. Um, I do need to get some more C41 developer, so that'd be another trip to uh, Bristol cameras at some point to get some of that, or I might just order some online. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't believe I nearly didn't bother this morning. But I nearly sort of stayed in bed longer. But I'm really glad that I come out. I don't often get this when I come into woodlands, uh, this mist. But it just makes such a massive difference to woodland photography. When you've got mist, because it adds mystery, it adds separation and it just, yeah, it just brings the whole landscape to life, really, in my view. Um, but like I say, it makes it a little bit easier than it normally would be, but I uh, still struggle. So, but I'm determined, and that is the main thing, that I get out and keep trying and trying and trying until I get something that uh, I'm actually proud of from Woodland. Um, that's the, the goal. So yeah, uh, so we're still going. It's obviously very wet, very muddy, but I am loving it. So glad to be out. There's just so much of it. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I just find this so relaxing and just so beautiful. Just being out on my own. There might be the, 
the odd dog walker about, but I haven't seen anyone all day. I can hear some machinery in the distance. I think that's probably the forestry stuff that's going on because there is signs up saying that. But it's just so peaceful and it's just beautiful. And literally this, you know, does so much for me um, in terms of sort of just making me feel good and really just lifting my spirits and just, yeah, just gives me a massive buzz. Being out here in such beautiful conditions with my camera, just not necessarily on my own. I'm quite happy to come out here with other people and have do photography or just come for a walk or whatever. But there is something about just being out with your camera on your own and just listening to the birds and the silence now and you know now and again you can hear the rain in the puddles and it's just beautiful and it's so inspiring to keep coming out and keep getting shots and keep you know trying to try and even when you fail you know a, a shoot you then get to you get you know come to the next one and you get conditions like this and it just makes it all worth it and it just makes everything just feel amazing and uh yeah, I just love being out here. Just photography, man. So it's just such a, an amazing hobby to have, um, or profession, if you do it professionally. But it's just such an amazing thing. You know, community is amazing. Um, you know, just want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing and leaving me comments and stuff and enjoying reading everyone's comments. But uh, yeah, just, the being out here and you know just in the mist although it is dying back a bit now but when you look back that way when you just think oh it's beautiful man it's beautiful so yeah just get out and shoot just get out and shoot you can't beat it it's absolutely amazing i mean look at this business here look look at the mist and the sort of trees disappearing into it Oh my God, it's just beautiful, man. It's beautiful. <sighs> Amazing. I need to find myself another shot though, because I am still struggling with that. In amongst all this beauty, I'm still struggling for a shot. A second shot, I should say. Oh, but it's amazing though. Let's carry on and see if we can find some. Come on, there's got to be something else in here. Well, there definitely is. It's just my failing, not the forest. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So let's find some else. Oh, God, it's amazing. Okay, so I think I might have actually found a tree in a forest. Check me out. But there is just something that's caught my eye down here, which is sat in a bit of an opening. And it's not one of these big old sort of fern style trees. Just trying to get to it. See if I can do something with it. Oh, sorry about that. But if you can see it, that's it there, look. That one there stood on its own. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm just seeing what I can do here. Um, obviously, there's mist, which is nice. Um, I'm just a bit worried that some of the tops of the tree might be lost. Um, to sort of the sky, but perhaps we don't want the top of the tree in. Um, it's just sort of walking around now and just having a look to see what works, uh, what might work in this composition. But, you know, when you see this tree, um, it definitely stands out against the, uh, the rest of the sort of evergreen trees that are growing around it. Um, <clears throat> obviously we've got this big tree here, which is blocking some of the branch, which is uh, not ideal. So I we'll just need to sort of step either side of that to see if I can um, get a decent image out of this. So I'm just gonna have a wander around and see if uh, what works and what doesn't. Right, so I'm gonna set up here. I've got the tree just, just there. Um, I suppose I would like a bit more mist um, in these sort of evergreens behind, but the tree is quite striking and it just stand out quite nicely. I like the fact that we've got all these brown sort of ferns that have died off. Um, 
but yeah that does stand out against the uh the background there so i'm going to go with a 250 lens again i always seem to shoot with 250 and nothing else um okay so i've decided just to shoot this uh digitally um the reason why is although sorry about the camera shape there is sort of precariously balanced on uh, all this sort of foliage that's around so um anyway uh i don't think there's quite enough mist here to separate that tree from the background i do love that tree um if i get any sky in it's just gonna be blown out um so i'm just struggling to get get a good sort of composition in here with this so i've taken it on digital just so i can have a look at it later and i'm an hour over it and that sort of thing but again it just comes back to um you know with digital obviously i can afford to take this shot because it doesn't actually cost me anything i've already got the camera i've got the disc space or the uh, yeah i've got the disc space so it didn't cost me anything to shoot that um because the investment's already made but with film, obviously, I've always got on the, on the back of my mind that, right, I want to shoot portrait. It's a beautiful shot. Is it worthy of getting the camera out and going through £8 for each sheet every time I open that shutter? Um, and the answer to that question is, I don't think it quite is. It's a lovely scene. Um, I do like the, the fact that this is... You know this this tree is here but i think just a little bit more mist behind it um would just make it stand out a bit more i've just been sort of analyzing the the images on the um on the digital camera which i will put up on screen so you can see what i mean um but i just don't think it sort of pops enough against its background um and i'm just sort of looking around behind me and there's still loads and loads of mist sort of up in the um sort of heading back up the hill because I've dropped down a little bit so I think I'm a little bit below the mist now so I think I'm going to carry on and see if I can get a shot worthy of um, spending eight pound on a sheet of film so I'm going to get on and get up that hill and just see if there's any more sort of misty shots that I can take um, but I do like this and I have been stood here for a while um, in an hour about whether it's worth breaking the camera out to um to expose this shot um a part of me does say yeah just do it don't worry about it uh, if it comes out it comes out if it don't it don't but um i just know that when i develop it it's probably not going to be what i'm looking for um and you might disagree you might agree you might disagree uh, when you see the digital image you might say oh you should have really taken it it was a nice shot and all this but you might say no you're right it's bloody awful i wouldn't have even taken it on digital but um yeah it's a shame because it is a lovely tree but i think i'm going to carry on and see if there's anything else well there definitely will be other stuff in this woodland to take so i want to carry on and just see what else i can get yeah just um so I was um and ah about that photo um, just a minute ago. So obviously I haven't taken it uh, with the four by five. Um, as you can see, sort of down in this level, there is some tiny bits of mist, but it's pretty much dissipated now uh, in the lower part of the woodland. But behind me up there, as you can see, there is still some mist about. Uh, so I'm obviously just below the cloud line as it stands at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna walk up this path and sort of see if I can um, find any more compositions up here. Just go back into this uh, sort of mist at the top here and uh, see if I can get some uh, really nice trees, just standout trees or um, just some uniform sort of, um, <clears throat> sort of trees really that are, that are just uniform and just disappear off into the mist. It's really what I want. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna head up there and see if I can uh, if I can find something else. But uh, yeah, it's just oh, I said a minute ago. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'll be happy if I just go away with my couple of uh, couple of shots or one shot I took on uh, on portrait and uh, a couple of digital images. I'll be happy with that. Just well, it's so nice to be out. Um, but there's gotta be other stuff up in this uh, forest line up here. So I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna see what I can get. So fingers crossed. There's some out there to shoot. Right, let's get up this hill.
But then, so, I've managed to get my sheep down uh, just through the woodland. And um, it's just down on this path at the bottom here that you won't be able to see. And then I've walked up and around, and then I've come up to this viewpoint here. Now, I've taken a similar shot uh, to this before um, in the Brecon Beacons. And I, it's very minimalist, very simple. Um, but I do like it. And what it is, is you've got the fern, or the, the fern trees here, and they just disappear off into the distance, and then just the white. And I like the as it sort of disappears on back to nothing. Um, so what I'm sort of talking about at the moment is get the 5 out, 250 miles on, uh, portrait 160, and I'm going to take a couple of digital images first just to see if I get the track in the bottom. Again, you might not be able to see that. Or if I just cut the track off and literally it's just trees off into the distance um, as the sort of mist rolls rolls through them. So at the moment, um, so I'm going to take a couple of shots with this and then we're going to see uh, if I'm using this as a bit of a viewfinder uh, app, I suppose. Um, and then we're going to see if, if I like them, and uh, yeah, and then we'll get the 4x5 out and get a couple of shots of that. And then I think that'll be the last couple of shots for the day because I'm nearly back in the car now. Um, so again, I don't just want to shoot film for, for the sake of shooting it, um, I've got to shoot something I like. Um, so yeah, and I'm quite liking this sort of layered uh, layered scene we've got going on here with this mist. So I'm going to take a couple of shots with this um, and just sort of see if it works with that in the bottom. I do think it's a little bit messy. I think it's a little bit messy. Sixty mil max reach on this one. There's a tree just here, which is just coming into um, coming into view, um, which is a bit distracting. Because I'm actually sort of shooting this digitally, I'm not too fast. Um, let's see what's yeah, um, let's see what square crop looks like. Yeah, quite like in the square. Right, so as you can see, it's a bit precarious. I desperately need to get this tripod situation sorted because uh, it's not very good for, um, uh, for shooting videos as it stands at the moment. So, uh, which is the first place. Make sure we we'll focus right. Yeah, that was a bit shot. Uh, mode I was in F 8 20th of a second well, I would say as well um, just on my 4x5 I've actually changed the base um, because the sort of focusing screw came off again annoyingly um, and I I don't know how I ended up with it but I ended up with two of these I don't really know why um, but I ended up with two so i've just swapped it over um, and put the new base on which is a lot better for some reason um, although the screw does come through the bottom it doesn't interfere with the uh with the focus slider there um which is quite nice so i'm able to take that on without it sort of moving around which uh, makes a big difference um but yeah the just the focusing screw seems to be a lot better i used to find that this thing stuck all the time and yeah, I don't know quite what happened to the other one, but um, this one just seems a lot smoother. So, yeah, I've changed the base. What I have noticed as well is on the side, um, you'll see there there's there's uh, a hole. And you'll see on this side, there's a hole with a screw in it. So, obviously, that side should look like that side. And somewhere along the line, the screw has come out. So, I did contact Intrepid the other day. Um, and they just let me know what screw they use uh, in there. So... So ordered a few off Amazon and uh, keep me in the bag just in case they fall off. But I've got no clue when that fell off or where it fell off. So um, anyway, there we go. Right, let's stop the filming of this and um, there we go. Let's turn that off. 
And let's get the uh, the proper camera set up, shall we? The real deal. So obviously I've leveled my tripod base. Um, it's always important, as I keep saying, to start with a level tripod. Um, so that's the first thing that I always do anyway. Um, and then I make sure that this is level. What I do find with this camera is on the side, on this side, the there's basically a, if I just turn this around, so you can see here, there's actually like a, a feed unit that this, this thing goes in, so it sort of slides up and down this, and you'll see it comes forward and back. Um, this one goes all the way back to the end, but on this side, for whatever reason, it just doesn't. And I'm assuming it's got something to do with the screw down there. But what I do find is that sometimes this, when you go to change the orientation, catches on the middle. And it's actually scratched it a bit there. Not that the scratch bothers me, but it's just the fact that when it does catch, it's just, it's annoying. Because, um, like I say, you're trying to get the camera level. Um, and now it's actually in the way of that piece of metal, even though the tripod... Um, I'll say that's not level. Yeah, so even when I go to get this level, it's still just in the way, and it's um, it's just frustrating, really. But right, that's that. Put the lens in the last hole. The lens board. I've been looking at new four x five cameras. And I was really tempted to uh, look at the Shen Hao. 4x5, um, I'd love their 6x17 camera, but it's just uh, a lot of money. And uh, it's more important things to buy at this very moment in time, so. Right, that's that. Check all that's still level and I turn it around. Which it is right let's get this 250 mil lens on dust gets everywhere that's not too bad i can actually see that right let's get this focused right so we're all focused in now that's fairly easy i've got no rise and fall on the lens because i don't really need it um it's, uh, it's quite a simple shot. It's a nice shot. Um, I've not got the road in the bottom and I've literally just got trees uh, heading out into the distance, which to me is a nice shot. So I have got a little bit of this one in the frame. Um, it's not too distracting to be honest because there is a tree on this side as well that sort of balances that out. Um, and then you've got the two tall, tall ones either side and then you've just got it disappearing off into the mist. So I need to now get this um, metered. It's going to be a fairly interesting one because uh, you've obviously got the white of the sky. So I don't want that white to be completely blown out. Um, so I'm going to start with that and put that white on a, um, uh, a fairly close to textureless white as I can get it without it being textureless white and then see where everything falls in below that. So I'm going to take one of the sky first. So that is an EV of 13. So if I put 13 on plus three, and then let's see where everything goes. So let's go mid ground where the mist is, is a 10, which is giving me what you would normally class as being middle gray. And then the trees down here are an EV of nine which is a minus one and a third. And the darkest areas I can see are seven and two thirds, which is there. So I think I've got enough space here to just move the textureless or the white just in a bit. Because um, although there isn't really much detail in there, I don't just want it to be a blown out white and that's the end of it. So um, I think we're, I think I'm fairly good with that. So where I would sort of sit middle grey is about EV10, 
it's about right and just to go around the scene and make sure there's nothing lower than sort of seven and two thirds which there isn't so I'm happy with that now so I'm going to shoot I'm going to shoot um, F22 fourth of a second so that's what I'm going to set up and thankfully it stopped raining which is nice so let's close the aperture blades so we don't expose the film F22 fourth of a second let's do a bit of a test shot although I didn't do any test shots earlier with them all working fine so uh, let's get the film out and get the film in there and uh, wait for the opportune moment I think I need a bit more mist in there hopefully it's not disappeared right let's get on and take one now so I'm going to cut the shutter I've already done a test shot I've got nothing I don't need to shield the uh, the lens with anything so we're all good there let's take this shot I just love that sound of the shitter makes on a 4x5, it's utterly beautiful. It's probably one of the best sounds out there, I reckon. But yeah, I love that shot. I love the mist just sort of rolling in amongst the trees there. It just adds a layer of sort of mystery and yeah, I love, I love that. Right, let's get another shot taken. I don't remember if I caught the shutter or not. Nope. Help if I caught the shutter, wouldn't it? That's it. Put the lock in there to make sure that doesn't fall out. Not that these do, to be fair. And that's it. So four shots taken today um, of two things. Obviously, I've shot both sides um, in both locations, just in case I have an issue with... Uh, with scratches or developing or didn't quite come out right or whatever the case might be um i've got two um i've got like a backup basically so yeah so i'm happy with that happy with today i'm going to sort of head on now and um go back to the car and uh go on with the rest of my day i think so yeah such a beautiful location right i'm gonna get packed away so I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you did like it, then leave a like. Uh, helps me out massively and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're liking the content I'm creating, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, helps me out massively and I really do appreciate that. And leave a comment below. Um, I always read them and I get back to people. I like reading people's comments, suggestions, that sort of thing. Uh, where I might have gone wrong, where, what you would do differently to me. And that's I'm always really interested to know how people shoot um, you know, in their own photography work, really. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed the images that you've seen du um, you know, during watching the video and I will see you in the next one. See you again.